Let's take a look in the Foxbat cabin. First and most obvious is the extensive glazing on the fuselage sides and top which makes the cabin feel very light and airy. There is a metal panel over your head to keep off the direct sun and there are optional metal fuselage sides who prefer a more solid appearance. There are big top hinged doors supported by gas struts to make entry and exit particularly easy. Uh, one or both doors can be removed for photography or in hot weather, but you can't open them in flight. Once inside, you'd notice just how big the cabin is, with over 128 centimetres, that's 50 inches in the old money, at elbow and shoulder level. Ventilation is good with a rotating air scoop in each door. The seats are adjustable. The main flight controls are either the standard centre Y-handle stick with brakes and electric trim or the optional twin control yokes which are similar to Cessna or Piper aircraft. The flap handle is in the roof between the seats. The nose wheel is steerable via the rudder pedals with a very small turning radius. Luggage is securely held behind the seats in a hard bottomed zippered container with a weight limit of 20 kilos or 45 pounds. A key point about the Foxbat is the flat, unobstructed cabin floor, which has no control sticks protruding from under the seats ready to trap documents or other loose items and cause potential control problems, so you can safely stow your flight bag under your legs in front of the seat. Another plus point is the headroom. Unlike some high-wing light aircraft, you don't need to duck down your head to see under the wing, something which is particularly important to me as I seem to have rather a long body. All in all, the cabin's a great contributor to the enjoyment, comfort and safety of flying in the Foxbat. You're not crammed in with your passenger, there's plenty of air to breathe and the controls fall very naturally to hand.